back and I am super excited because uh, we have one of my favorite people in here and uh, he's a living legend in my book. <laughs> so please welcome Mark Rawson on our, on our podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't think I've ever been introduced that way. <laughs> It's like, I, Katie knows I've been geeking out ever since you said yes. <laughs> been very oh. excited. <laughs> <laughs> you are in two of my all-time favorite movies, so we're going to get into that. hundred <laughs> percent. But first, you're going to talk about Spider-Man. Before we talk about Spider-Man, Katie's going to introduce the podcast. the podcast. And say, Hello, everybody, and welcome to all the films we judged before. I'm Katie, that's Lily Kay, and obviously, as mentioned previously, our special guest, Mark Ralston. So Spider-Man. So Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, uh, my first question about uh, the Spider-Man game, obviously, you've been in all three of them at this point, and there are very heavy implications about the future in there uh, but before we get into that well I, I think a lot of people associate Norman with Willem Dafoe at this point so what was the hardest part to to you know do it differently because it's it's quite a different character uh, this Norman from from the Norman we saw from the Spider-Man movies yeah I think the most important thing is that you know the um, producers at Insomniac Games they're very collaborative very creative and uh, we really were going for amplifying the father-son relationship and what that really is. And, you know, just exploring those depths. So really, I mean, you know, I, I was you know, I'm aware of Willem Dafoe's performance and, you know, other people who have played uh, Norman. But uh, I kind of removed myself from the comparison and just really were... And, the freedom that Insomnia gave us was to really create our own character. So uh, I really just focused in on that. Like that, that, that to me is like the essence of Norman, you know, as we meet him in, in, in the Spider-Man series. You know, he's, he's larger in life. It's, it's, it, it, you know, I've, I've played Lex Luthor in a number mm -hmm. of uh, animated versions and uh, it's just fun. I mean, you know, it's a uh, people who have uh, sort of <clears throat> psychotic tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the evil must masterminds, I would say, <laughs> like both Lex and, and Norman are like typically exactly. in that in that era of like, you know, they are trying to do the right thing most of the time, but going about it the wrong way, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and of course, like, you know, money and power corrupt. Mm. So no wonder that Norman Osborne isn't, you know, you know, corrupted. But yeah, I think they the company very masterfully like hinted at what's to come. I don't know. I haven't seen anything, mm -hmm. or heard anything yet. So uh, we will see. But the encouraging thing is, is the October twentieth release of the second game was huge. I mean, yeah. I, uh, the reviews we got were just sort of mind boggling. You know, we we've been reviewed in the past as people saying that the cinematics in the game is better than the film. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is which is crazy to think, but you know, technology is an amazing thing, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and, I, and I've noticed since I guess my first game was Deadline Battlefield or Battlefield Deadline, but I've seen it progress over the years, and each year, and of course, each game has to top itself so yeah. they can successfully oh, yeah. better. But it's but it's mainly being driven by the technology. A quick segue off the game: though, I'm working on a project now which I can't talk about mm -hmm. um, for meta, yeah. but it's, but it's virtual reality. Ah. Oh. And it, 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 this is a whole nother level. I mean, it is, I, I was gobsmacked. I just couldn't really process the fact that, you know, do you know how like in, in the Spider-Man game, the facial capture is really real. It's wonderful. The body capture is just a little bit, it's a little wooden, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. this virtual reality, um, shoots at like 124 frames per second. Jesus Christ. They, they, they call it hyper-reality. Wow. So it's literally everything that I do, and it's not me on the screen. It, it's it's an avatar. Yeah. But down to this, and instantaneously, the avatar does whatever I do. I mean, wow. even this, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But it's certainly going to... I mean, this... We see this in our world because it changes so quickly, but this is certainly going to affect not only the gaming world, but also the film world. Yeah. Because it opens up 
just myriad possibilities. So um, it's so exciting, but you know, for for any young actor, like I've been saying this, I was asked to talk to um, University of Michigan film students, and um, they were saying, "So, what you know, what advice can you give?" I said, "Well, number one is, is if you're filmmakers, you better know all the technology. Oh yeah, and you, better, you better know it inside and out, and you better keep your ear to the ground of what's coming up next because there will be newer things. That that that's you know, my father was a programmer for IBM. Oh, wow, okay. okay. And he told so me when I was, oh, it's amazing." Yeah, you know, he he was at the forefront of all this, but even yeah. then, even then, he knew that miniaturization was the future. Because he told me one day, I was six years old. He took me to the mainframe computer. Imagine an entire office floor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> putting cards in, and he's explaining to me, a six-year-old. He said, "You see, son, this is all the computer." And I'm going, "Wow." He said, "But yeah, but in, in your day, one day, all this is going to be the size of this, or this." And he pulls out a packet of cigarettes. And yeah. damned if it isn't the most exact size. <laughs> yeah. um, but I remember thinking, and I think I said to my dad, like, how do you get all that in there? Mm. <laughs> yeah. But they knew it. In fact, there's a great documentary called The Hundred Years of IBM. Yeah. Watch it's made by Errol Morris, famous documentarian. Yep. He says it all right there. It's like, you know miniaturization the world gets smaller and smaller and smaller with the greater the technology like we like, like we're doing now yeah we have this access from three different countries and we're in real time and it's it's amazing yeah it's, it's unreal i was i was gonna ask because i mean you kind of feel like you've implied it with, with your answer but it is is the technology and the way that it progresses and all that sort of stuff part of why you kind of because you've done a fair few games over the past few years is that kind of why you keep going back to the the industry to be honest, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, as an actor, I've, I've always tap danced and, you know, <laughs> done numerous different things. I mean, they do a lot of voice work. I, you know, I do games, I mean, film, TV. Mm -hmm. like. Um, but I saw 10 years ago that, wow, I mean, it, it's no mystery. The gaming industry eclipses the movie industry by massively yeah. trillion, trillion dollars. Probably. Yeah. But I've also seen the shifts in the film industry that made me think, hey, you know what? Because I regard the gaming world as like, it's for me, it's acting in the round. Mm. Like doing theater in the round. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that's the way I approach it in order for anything to be successful. Obviously, the scripts have to be great. Then the actors have to like you know, make the words great. So um, I remember when I first started doing games, buddies of mine would say, wow, oh, games, are, are you okay? Are you, <laughs> you, do you need some money? <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> and now, like, my best friend is like, oh, man, I can't mm. get in. I can't break in. And so it becomes, well, A, in the world, I mean, it becomes, uh, you know, they, they, they got to have good actors. Yeah. yeah. You know, I remember the day, I think it was Halo 4, and we were having lunch with a Microsoft executive, and he was just hinting about, you know, oh, the game's going to do great and everything else. And we were having such a nice lunch. I said, well, you know, just saying, uh, you know, if you guys could like, you know, throw us a bone here and chip us in on like a little bit of all the profit you're making. Yeah. And he found said, okay, he said, you guys do that and we'll cut you out. We'll just use non non union actors. And I thought, first of all, it was like, <laughs> like slow down, dude. Like I was just, you know, throwing something out there for fun. Um, but that backfired because they they, they tried using non-union actors non-union yeah. actors can't do what for example on this virtual thing you know we got there we had had rehearsal days where we got there and some things changed they wanted to rearrange stuff in the moment one rehearsal and bam you're shooting and, and somebody untrained is not going to be able to like a make instantaneous adjustments like mm -hmm. get new dialogue just at the minute and just seamlessly work it all in Anyway, I, I'm I'm really really proud of the Spider Man franchise. It's and, and I'm in a franchise. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> but, but, but see that 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 was a big uh, uh, revelation for me because I didn't know if we would go past number one when number two happened. Um, knowing how long it takes to actually produce a game, it's about yeah. five. Years. Yeah. Yeah. I jokingly said to my wife, I said, "Well, you know, if I'm walking and talking when I'm seventy-two, <laughs> it will be in the money." So. <laughs>
I think you had very intense roles in both of the games, but which one was harder to nail? I, I guess that's that's the real question because, you know, the, the first one is more the, the conflict between uh, Norman and Otto, but now that Harry is here, what what was more, you know, difficult to, to get right, I guess, because, you know, both was great <laughs> let's be honest like i just love the whole uh norman and harry storyline in this one but i equally loved the whole you know just discovering the the past friendship and relationship between otto and uh and norman because i'm a big spidey fan <laughs> he's yeah, everywhere yeah. on me so <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, it's I'm, I'm always interested to, to hear like you know the actor themselves like what was the? Yeah, I think the second one was, you know, was deeper. You know, yeah. uh, really allowed Norman to, to go just deeply into how how desperate he is not to lose his son. I mean, the, you know, he's already suffered the loss of his wife, and now the thing that it's his one connection to living, mm. and uh, so it, it wasn't no, as much as it was harder to nail, but it really was. It was just commanded a much more emotional involvement in it. And then, you know, when we shoot these things, it's like, you know, we do one, two takes, maybe three, and we're out. We're 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 done. Yeah. I mean I mean, sometimes if they need to, which is rare, you know, there'll be successive takes, but really that they expect, you know, we we first take is like it's gotta be production quality takes. So uh mm -hmm. And that, that's funny. That's like even in the film world, I used to love directors who would say, look, let's just shoot the rehearsal because actors are normally like so geared up and ready for the moment that usually the first, if, it, if they rehearse, it's the best take of all. Yeah, true. <laughs> that's true. Because everyone is really poised and ready and, uh, you know, successive takes can be can be great. But that's and that's usually where some of the movie magic happens, you know, but mm. uh but, it's, but it, even in the gaming world, it's a, it's a real acting challenge. And yeah. I was really um, proud of some of the work I threw down. I mean, I really tapped Norman's anguish and grief and mm. I shocked the shit out of the entire crew. It was like the, the day that I, you know, that when, I, when I'm destroying everything. Yeah. They weren't quite ready for that. So, um, <laughs> But very, very proud of it. Yeah. And I, I, I and truly the insomniac guys are they're just like Brian Ishtar is just the most amazing creative force. And yeah. And he really does. We we've become like a little family now. You know, the, the actors and the producers and everybody. It, it's it's really, really great set to work on. Yeah. I love that. That sounds that sounds amazing. Um but uh, I guess off of that, are you uh excited at the prospect of potentially but yeah, as as you said, it feels very much like it's been hinted at, and we're kind of moving in that direction. Are you are you excited at the prospect of potentially becoming the Green Goblin? If, well, absolutely. I mean, if that happens, that would be uh, extraordinary. I mean, I feel like you. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely I mean, no, heading in that direction. I mean, there have been hints, just just people like saying to me, like, "Hey, you know what? Keep, keep limber. You know, keep." <laughs> shape because you know uh in a lot of the games you know like we, we have amazing crew of stunt guys mm. who do like you know like your lowenthal will do spider-man up to a point and then when he has to like you know propel himself across the room it's like okay <laughs> you you the young guy over there you do that right and they do, they do these amazing amazing stunts that are just <laughs> mind-boggling but um yeah so th there is that too it's like you know, you've got to be ready and um it would be amazing to be able to delve into that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, you know, they, you know the way they're shooting the games these days, um, and it's become a platform for a lot of different uh, mediums. Like even like let's say you know like the Star Wars. Like I'm, I'm yeah, I'm Ahsoka. But they're taking a brand, and in, in Spider Man Two game, I mean, the script is incredible. I mean the, yeah. the, the number of characters they introduce. Yeah. I remember our first read through. I just thought, "Wow, this is going to mess people up." They're so <laughs> yep. I can confirm, Lily and I were, we just were like, sobbing, just like sobbing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I I had other fans tell me the same thing. They said they were in tears when when I had the big 
you know, blowout scene. Um, so, you know, so, so basically the, the platform that they're all using, they take a brand and then you introduce all these characters and it's spin-off, 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 spin-off. Mm -hmm. This is going to be happening for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with, with Star Wars, de decades. Mm -hmm. And okay. it's, it, it's, it, it's something I've seen over time where even network television, they're always trying to find a brand. Yeah. Something they can hang their hat on and just produce, you know, for years to come. And that was always the, the big thrust is like, you know, can you get one of those? And what better franchises than, you know, Marvel, Star Wars? I mean, their fan base is so huge that, um, yeah, we'll be doing a lot of this. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As long sure. as it's uh, profitable and, and people are interested in it, I, I don't think these things will, will stop. I don't mind personally because, like, you know, I'm, 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 as long as it's like, I can see that they are putting the thoughts and love and everything that that makes it great. Uh, I'm I'm happy with it. Like you know, I think there's always downfalls in in every like very big big franchise. Uh, but uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, we still have a lot in in our family neighborhood Spider Man. Uh, and you know, I'm I'm very excited to see the Green Goblin. That's that's what I will say. <laughs> <laughs> A potential Spider-Man three, hopefully, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how how they're gonna roll things out. I mean, the strike could put a little bit of a uh, uh, you know a cog in the works, but yeah. uh, it'll all get ironed out, I'm sure. And, and and you know, we'll 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 just have to wait and see. Yes, yeah. you know, like I say, it, it won't be coming out for years. And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. All right, before we move on from uh, Spider-Man, uh, dearest Yuri Loventhal is a good friend of ours. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just going to take this chance and ask you, like, do you have a funny story with Yuri <laughs> that you can share with us? <laughs> oh. No, he's just such a sweet guy. I mean, yeah, he is. we love him here. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, nothing's coming to mind right away. But I'm, I'm, I'm picturing this one day on set when we, I'm, we were laughingly crazy i'm trying to think about exactly what it was gosh i can't remember I can't remember <laughs> no but no but we, we you know bill sailors you, you know um raji everybody like they're they're all great actors and such fun to play off of and uh um you know it's always you know you look at the performance like like say any lead character it's never as fun as as what i get to do yes <laughs> <Never>. <laughs> Yes, yes, he he gets to kiss the girls. That's fantastic. But truth is, it's always fun, more fun to play the villain. So that's so true. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. There, there is this one thing in my head. It'll probably come to me later in the, the interview here. But uh, there was one day that we all literally fell on the floor laughing. Uh, we I don't. Like Yuri mentioned this to us. I feel like he he kind of like he, he hinted he at something. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he might have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but you know. Whenever it comes to your mind, just yell at us. <laughs> just tell us. Uh, the other question regarding Yuri is because he's we basically became besties because we love the same things. Like I was just <laughs> dumbfounded how similar our taste is. So did he geek out uh, once he saw you for the first time? Because I know he loves aliens just like I do. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, was there a little geeking out on his part? Please say yes. It was, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of get that quite a bit. I mean, people. <laughs> when I was on the set of this virtual game, you know, one of the actors seems was like, "So nice to meet you. You're Drake." <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like, or even I'll tell you, you know, the day I auditioned for Shawshank Redemption, right? I'm sitting in an office. There's a long hallway, and down at the end of the hallway was a sort of perpendicular hallway. So um, this guy kept passing down the hallway, looking down the hallway at me and then disappearing and coming back and looking the other way. And I was like, who's this person? This is weird. <laughs> I, mean, they keep, I mean, they happened numerous times. So when I walk in the room, Frank Darabont's there, right? The director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first thing he says, he says, I got to get this out of the way, but you're Drake. <laughs> <laughs> And I went, oh, shit, okay, so you're an Aliens fan. That was right. So completely different sort of tone and character, but um, yeah. yeah, that's that's an interesting story in itself. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I normally get that. You know, people are reminded that, you know, I, I 
played some, you know, their I- iconic, favorite iconic characters. Yeah. I mean, as I mentioned, like, you know, two of my favorite movies are behind me, Shawshank Redemption and Aliens. So, you know, <laughs> I've been geeking out silently. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I, as, as I've gone through my career, I, I, I've just been so lucky. I mean, I've been, I mean, Rush Hour, you know, mm. potentially. It's it's probably in the top ten of action comedy films. You know, it's it's great, mm-hmm. uh, hearted, great drama. I mean, I, I've just been so so lucky, but especially to be in like you know, certainly Aliens in the, the sci fi realm is you know probably number one or number two in most people's minds. I personally think Aliens is a flawless movie. Same. Uh, I, yeah, I think I think it's potentially Jim Cameron's best film. Um, I agree. Mainly because you know he he spec wrote it, you know, and then it took him eight years to get to making it. Yeah. Of course, of course, in between that time, he went on and made a, a cult classic like Terminator. But <laughs> yeah, just a little film, <laughs> just a little film, yeah. <laughs> total, total genius, and uh, and yeah, I just, I, I really, I, I am so grateful and and lucky. But I guess you know, everything in life, you know, a little bit of luck helps. You know, being at the right place at the right time, ha- or or more importantly, not so much just luck, but if you're fitting the director's picture, mm. all directors have to have a vision. Sometimes you just don't fit their vision, but you know, you're lucky if you know you fit their whole palette. You know, because look at the way like Jim cast uh, Aliens, like that was pretty amazing. When, mm. when you think about all the different people, and then you know, Bill Paxton and, and 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 Mike will be coming to the rescue. Like you all know the story. They've been yep. arriving on set and he's filming within two days. It's like that that was a performance. I, I you know, I I love that you said the whole like division of uh, director because it happened to me so many times. Uh where I got to the last round of the casting and then I just didn't fit. I you know, something wasn't right in that in that vision and at first, it was very, I don't know, I was very sad because of it, because there's not much you can do about it if you just, you know, it's something about you that, that doesn't fit there. But then I understand in a way, because uh, I think it's very important, especially with, with movies and, and TV shows and, and now with gaming as well, to to have the right person there. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I think... Uh, it's not a, not a coincidence that these two movies are some of my favorite movies ever created. Uh, I think they are just perfectly cast uh, and just perfect stories uh, in my book. What Jim did with Aliens, I mean, he really was the auteur, right? Mm. He, yeah. He and his wife, uh, Gail and her at the time, were visionaries. I mean, female action uh, hero uh, or multiple, like Vasquez as well. Uh, and then you think, you know, even like Frank Darabont, I mean, mm. how amazing that he, you know, he, he, he spec wrote Shawshank. Did you know that there was a contest? Yeah. And, you know, it's amazing that, you know, and then he formed this great relationship with Stephen King, but um, there's something, you know, it's serendipity, you know, when you're, when you, when you're actually on set, and things go well and um, the final product is something that really, resonates with audiences it's 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 it's, it's a virtual crapshoot but like it, i believe in having an auteur anyway because mm. that way you're ensured that the the thrust of the film is going to be consistent it's going to come from one vision and that's what happens with a lot of movies today you get corporate head honchos who think they know something about film yeah their bottom line is really the dollar and it just does not make for great movies. I mean, and, and even more so, I mean, in as much as Zoom is wonderful, we were talking about that earlier, um, the, the the audition process now is so fake because mm-hmm. you never get to meet, you never get to meet people. I used to win jobs all the time being in the room with the director and the director would say, hey, I like that, but can you do this? Yeah. If you make the adjustment in the moment, boom, the part's yours. You've already proved them you can take direction. You've already shown them you can make an adjustment on the spot. Yeah. Uh, and now there's there, there's never that possible. Never. 
you, no. you throw the tape in there. You just hope. And, you know, if you get a call, you get a call. But I think it's false. I think it's a fake way of casting because, A, it's done away with the whole professional casting directors. Mm. So they cast off the list now. Mm. Um, and understanding, too, it's like the number of, you know, <laughs> you know, people in our business like you, you get used to rejection right? <laughs> you have how, to <laughs> how many times have we been told no right yeah, yeah and, it, and it, it would cripple other people it would cripple them honestly people would become paralyzed with fear from even trying it again because the fear of being told no is so great but uh i don't know i was i was born with like uh, just a thick skin and I, I long, long ago, I was just like, hey, I think it may have been one of my agents just said, look, I'm sure you did great work. You just didn't fit their picture. Yeah. And there's so many variables you cannot even wrap your head around. I mean, some things are really stupid, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, a, a buddy of mine called me up one day and he was almost in tears and he had gone to network on a big TV show. And he said, he said, you're not going to believe what happened. I'm 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 in the room with like you know everybody's there. This is like the, like the network meeting, and somebody said, "Is are those those are your eyebrows?" And he's like, "My eyebrows, yeah." They're like, wow, they're really thick. I mean, just and my buddy was devastated. He was like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, I, I just did a, I just did a performance, and you're talking about my eyebrows? Like, oh it, my it's, god. I've had people tell me I'm I'm, I'm too fair. I've had Af African American friends; they're, they're too black. Like Morgan Freeman told me, he said he said you know he did electric company and couldn't get arrested for twenty years. And people would tell me he was too black; he wasn't black enough. People didn't like the, the, the his markings on his face. Yeah. And then you know he got touched by you know fate and you know got an Academy Award nomination. He said my life changed. And all those people who had said you were too this or too that suddenly like. <gasps> You're so amazing, and he yeah. said, "I never said what I wanted to, but you can just look at the you know, look <laughs> at them. And, oh, yeah, right, right, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. right, yeah. That I, I, one of my directors told me, and and you know, I live by that. That you got to get a lot of those, but you will go until you get a yes, and it, yes. it will come if if you you know just keep going. So that's what I've been trying to do, basically, just keep going." One yeah. day it's going to be yes, even if I'm forty or fifty, I don't care. It's but that but that's the thing. It's I I would look at it the same way. The more no's you get, it's good because you're getting closer to that one that says yeah. yes. And and then once you get the one yes, then usually work begets work, and mm -hmm. people see your work and they go, "Wow, I want that person." It's it's and also, you know, if you're bitten by the bug, you know, yeah. just don't. <laughs> It doesn't really matter. It's like for me, you know, I've had people say, uh, so are, are you retired now? I was like, no. <laughs> no. I I will never retire. I honestly I, I I won't. I, you know, I love what I do. Even it, 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 and I, I make it something that I love, even you know, in, in the in the gaming world. And I I take this stuff as seriously as I've been doing a movie. Yeah. Um, and I've always wanted to, I, you know, I when I learned that Moliere, you know, yeah. French actor, you know, that he died on stage of a heart attack, like in the exactly. middle of the And I, I it was something romantic about it. When I was a kid reading that, I was like, wow, that's not a bad way to go. Like, you know, <laughs> middle of something you really love and just go, out. Yeah, I know. I was just going to say, um, because like, I'm not an actor. Lily, Lily's very much a, a, an actor, but I work in, I, 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 I do work in, in film and TV. I work in crews, um, and it is the same thing. You go around and you, you try, you try and get work, and you try and hope that one piece of work gets, gets another piece of work. But at the same time, it's like everything's been so quiet recently that it's like I'm in a period of like just not getting anything and I know that that period will end at some point but at the same time it's like uh, you know you're going through like a large period of appointment there's there's the part of the brain that's like well maybe you should go try do something else and every time I'm like well no because this is this is the only thing I've been wanting to do like I don't even care what like capacity I'm in it in I just need to be close to it you know it's like I need to I need to be 
yeah. doing something that's going to help make something else it's like that's the only thing it's like I can't even fathom a world in which I'm not trying to do something like close to it it's, oh, it's that's- you've been bitten by the same bug I mean, yeah it was it was said to me i was i did an internship um like a couple of weeks on a movie a couple of years ago um and they kept the producers and a couple of the crew were like so have you have you been bitten by it and i was like kind of sitting there like oh yeah you know i have and i was like but in back of my head i'm like i was bitten by this you know when i started taking media studies <laughs> during my gcses and i was like 14 and i was like well this is what i'm gonna do for the rest of my life you know <laughs> it's just like there's no other question it is it is an inevitability that's it and that's the one thing it's like i I say that you know you say to young people who who want some advice i said well number one is is like if if you cannot wake up in the morning knowing that this is what you have to do like like you have to do it like you there's if it's like that you're on the right track and you're doing the right thing but if you wake up and have any doubt and you don't, you're not proactive, literally every day, forget about it. Just forget about it. So you have to have that attitude to go on. And um, and things show up. I, I'm a big believer in, you know, whatever energetic you put out in any part of your life, you know, yeah. keep caring for others, whatever, you know, all that effort is not unrewarded. It just means that you're broadening your scope and you're broadening your your, your heart. So, and things show up. Life, yeah. in life, stuff shows up. You, We just have to be wise enough to go, oh, window of opportunity. Uh, mm-hmm. Let me walk through this door. Let me, let me give this a shot. Honestly, when I first started doing the gaming stuff, like for example, my agent, um, she wanted me, my voiceover agent, uh, who who does all the gaming work? Like she she wanted me to try that. And I said, "Yeah, I'll give it a shot." And it, the process was so much like theater. I thought, "Oh, I can fit in this." Mm-hmm. Then she said, she said, "Hey, like I want you to go on camera for commercials." And I went, "Not quite sure about that, but I'll do this for you." <clears throat> I can't do it. I just mm-hmm. can't do it because it's like you know, they call you at four in the afternoon. And say, "Hey, you're gonna be somewhere in an hour, dressed like this, da da da." And here, the, the, uh, we'll sit, we'll text you the stuff. And it's like yeah. no, I don't work like that. I'm not. I'm, I'm not interested. And then it's a it's a runaround, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah. Just just I, I tell everybody like the biggest mistake you'll ever make is, is quitting. Yeah. Yeah. If you quit, you think somebody else cares? Yep. Nah. Nobody cares. It's Nobody just, cares. <laughs> it's just, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what do you say? So yeah, the only thing I, I worry about. Uh, you know, in the strike zone, where that's all fantastic. Yeah. But, uh, I, th- there's been a tremendous shift, even in the independent film world. Now, you guys are luckier being in Europe because there's more facility to get funding. I mean, my, my son is a pro- film producer in the UK. Yeah, yeah. And um, we were just visiting with him, and he's like, "Dad, wow, financiers are just just clamming up." I mean. Uh, they're 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 all looking for that big brand thing to like make but yeah. but they're not doing all the little independent films which are really a a, a, a place where you can foster talent and yeah. writers exactly. all across the crew I mean, you have to have this and um you know i i trained at the drama center in london and christopher fettis uh, who ran the place uh, the very first day we were there imagine 60 of us right mm-hmm. you know 18 to 25 or whatever some people a little bit older um the first thing he said was ladies and gentlemen we're going to train you for something that probably won't exist in your lifetime the theater mm-hmm. and we all went what <laughs> what the theater not exist i mean that's why we're all there yeah well, but I've seen it happen. Fewer and fewer and fewer theaters, uh, fewer, fewer the- theatrical productions. I mean, it's like, you know, you look on Broadway, there's some great stuff. I mean, I just saw the production of um, Cabaret in London. Oh, um, I love it so much. I, I've seen it four times. I will go again at some point. It is, it is exceptional. <laughs> exceptional. And, and, and I saw the cast, Jake Shears and Rebecca Hiller. 
Reed. Whatever. Yeah, oh, oh, Rebecca something. I can't remember her. her Rebecca name. Taylor. She's known as self esteem. I know that for sure. I just can't remember Rebecca her Lucy, name. Rebecca Lucy Taylor. That's, that's her name. it. Rebecca. Yeah. She. About the whole thing, the way they changed the theater, they, they spent yeah. shit ton of money doing that, but the production was so. I was just entranced. I was, and it was it was the week when the tragic massacre happened in Israel. Of course, the play deals with the rise of fascism, and they so just adroitly portrayed the MC as like you know, as a clown. As mm. the devil, but it, and that's what fascists are. They're clowns, you know. They, you know, I mean, look, look, look at the ones we've been having to deal with the past ten years. Mm. Um, but oh, it moved me to tears. I was just sobbing. I mean, literally, just pouring down my face. My wife and my daughter was with us. She was like, "Dad, are you okay?" I was like, "I'm just, I'm overwhelmed. I can't just tell you." Enjoying the <laughs> yeah. and the and the young woman when she sang, "Life is a Cabaret." Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm old enough to oh Liza Minnelli. Liza Minnelli is like with a top hat and doing the t -t 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 like that. That isn't what it's about. No, this is my thing. I I, I saw the movie uh, recently. It was after I saw the play, and I hadn't seen the movie before, and I was quite kind of like I was a little disappointed by the movie because it doesn't like a thing I love about the play so much is that it really like does not go easy on you. Like you finish watching it, and it feels like somebody's like punched you in the gut. It's like yeah <laughs> you gotta kind of have to leave feeling very uncomfortable with like the way that this whole thing is is played out but yeah Liza Minnelli's version of it, it it's a version of Sally Bowles for sure and I think she does a wonderful job in that film but I love the version of Sally Bowles that is very much like like beaten down by everything and but also very self-aware of like who she is and is not just sort of like oh look I'm a bit of an ingenue sort of like vibes and all this stuff she goes no I'm I'm aware that I'm very deeply damaged, but this is a this is a choice I am making to like survive. Yeah, sort of yeah, yeah. And it, I, a friend of mine was saying, or Jeanette Goldstein was saying, uh, you know, Sally Bowles isn't meant to be a great singer. She's struggling yeah. in life, she's trying to find, she's trying to find something to latch onto. But in that last moment, this young woman, she just stood. She didn't do anything. No, I mean, just stood and. Tears were streaming down her face. Mm -hmm. It was so moving. I, I tell you, and it's coming to Broadway. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm very excited for for everybody to be able to see yeah, it. Hey, for me to do it. I, I'm, I'm going to go see it again just to see. I, I want to see how they transform whatever theater they choose in mm. New York. So true. It really, it really made it. It was totally immersive and just such fun. So we got off on a tangent here. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, we this is exactly tangent, what we love doing here. This is exactly yeah. what we want. Um, uh, I saw Eddie Redmayne. He was uh, the first uh, performance I saw. Uh, so I'm very excited that he's going back to it because he's he is excellent. There is something very like grotesque and kind of like, I don't know. Yeah, he kind of bends himself into weird positions when he when he plays the MC and is like playing with people in a very interesting way. Um, uh, yeah, it's just he's he's fantastic in it. Um, I can't so. I, like I, the, Jake Shears was was excellent too. I mean, it's things like that. You see, you see great bits of theater, and, and it, it'll exist. But you know, you know, I I was trained classically, and uh, uh, classic theater just very few and far between these mm. days. So yeah. people won't put their money behind it, and I think that's a shame because. Look, you think about it. The theater was the first medium mm -hmm. by societies taught each other, informed each other, you know, right, wrong, mm -hmm. what shifts the society should make. And it was a meeting place. So that, you know, people would have open discussion about it. I guess we do the same thing with films. You know, we do a similar thing. The more and more that we we get detached by technology, you know, it's like it's like yeah. our, our viewing habits. You know, I would. This summer, we, my daughters and my wife dragged me to see Barbie. Mm -hmm. and, and I had to wear pink. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what an amazing experience. I had such a huge amount of fun. The script is fantastic. I had a feeling she, Greta Gerwig, could well win best screenplay. Yeah, and you see someone like, uh, uh, I mean, because... 
um, Ryan Gosling. He was so committed to playing this doofus. He never <laughs> once winked at the camera, right? Mm -hmm. like some actors, when they were, like, they're apologizing for what they're doing, like, they'll make a little, you know, they do this, like, they'll always look at the camera. He was so committed. I loved it. God, it was funny. So they, so so this summer it was great. Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Incredible film. Goodness it's gracious. Incredible. It's, it's just... And I think there could be fewer and fewer and fewer. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Like, I, I'm, I'm at the point in my life where uh, I started watching more international uh, movies. Like, uh, I'm more into, for example, now I'm more into Korean movies because what they're doing is just mind-blowing to me. Like, uh, how they handle characters, relationships, story, everything is, is mm -hmm. just so unique. And and I felt like I needed that uh, because I, I was getting tired of, of you know, it's, it's the same... Uh, let's let's grab this franchise like you said it as well like you know let's grab domains that everyone knows and I'm like great can we do something original something you know fresh and new and and if it, it feels like that they are kind of stuck with this uh, currently in Hollywood where like let's grab the familiar and let's leave the new trust me we've yeah. heard we've heard rumor over the years that they're going to do a film remake of Gone with the Wind. And it's like, no. why? No. Yeah. <laughs> you, you really shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what it's going to take to shift it, sadly, because I think that so much of the industry is just driven by money. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel lucky to have been with some truly gifted filmmakers and yeah. I participated in, in, in some really amazing projects. I think back to John Frankenheimer, who directed me in this series, mm -hmm. Wallace, which was hugely acclaimed. Gary Sinise, Angelina Jolie, like, like you know, I, you know, Angelina Jolie is amazing. You watch her. Yeah, you watch her work. I mean, oh my God. She, we had this one scene where they're wheeling the gurney and wheeling Gary Sinise all the way down this hallway. Well, it was actually in the Roosevelt Hotel um, being played as a hospital. But, um, oh, my God, every single take, every single take, she was just sobbing, tears just streaming down her face. And at one point, Gary Sinise turned to me and said, gosh, I really don't want to know what she's thinking. <laughs> she had some sense memory that just took her to that place. And every single time, Wow, it's yeah. amazing. I I think uh, I think she said that each time when she has to do like this very emotional scenes, she just thinks about losing her kids or her mom, uh, which unfortunately happened. Uh, you know, in her I love Angelina, so this this is like the best thing to hear because I I really appreciate everything she does for others and uh, uh, you know all the amazing things that that she does for people is just mind-blowing to me and she's she's fucking great and i don't think many people acknowledge that 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 she's an amazing actress on top of that so yeah i do think that 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 um uh having a company like a24 who've been doing such a big oh, yeah. sort of like push in like that kind of independent independent yeah um like original ip sort of like filmmaking there's a lot of, you know they've brought us some of the most interesting um movies in the past couple of years i mean like everything everywhere all at once is one of the most like unique <sighs> pieces of media that i have seen in a very long time um it's like i it, it, it that stuff is still out there it's still it definitely still comes out i love make keeping an eye on the film festival circuit whenever they like things come around that way because like you find out about like just some of the most interesting movies there's um I've, I've said this to Lily a couple of times now there's a, a movie called The Holdovers that I'm so excited to see um I know it's out in the US already but it's not coming out here until January and I'm like 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 itching for it because it looks brilliant <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're all the people I you know I follow who go to like all the you know film festival spaces have been like yeah it is excellent so I'm like that one I want that one <laughs> that was one it's yeah, but it's like it is on also on us as like you know consumers to make an effort to seek out spaces where they are showing smaller films because like that you know the, the distribution part is you know 
yeah, it's it's very money driven. And it becomes very difficult because they don't put them out in as many cinemas. But like, you know, for people, especially for people who like say they have an interest in cinema to make the effort to find somewhere that's like showing something that maybe isn't shown in like a multiplex. In the big one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, it, it's, it makes such a big difference, especially to the people who, you know, make them because they just, you know, there's some kind of all you want is to be able to have people see the thing that you made. Right. But there was, but look, you know, when I when I first went to Hollywood in '86, they were making 450 to 500 films a year. Yeah, yeah, all sizes. And now, like, there's an inequity. It's like you know, there's either the tent pole or there's like the little right. ultra budget stuff. Um, some of which can be really good. Um, I, again, it all comes down to the writing and, uh, and having someone who's willing to believe in it and pony up the money for it, you know. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, um, awesome. I, I just know from, you know, talking to my son, it's like, you know, he he did a, a movie called A Street Cat Named Bob. It did mm-hmm. very well. He, he won, like, British Producer of the Year Award, Independent Producer of the Year. And he's got some beautiful, beautiful, he likes to do British-centric things. Mm. That's his his bet. And I, I, I thought it was, that he said, Dad, I don't want to be the producer of Fast and Furious. I don't care about the franchise. Like that. Yeah. So he likes to find literary gems, British gems, and then turn them into films. And he's got some beautiful, beautiful titles. I hope something comes through. Um, there seems to be a shift toward like the big event kind of thing. Yeah. And, and I don't know. There's room for everything. Yeah. We'll nice. see. We'll see. I just think that with, with, with the strike, I can sense certain things happening in Hollywood. You know, but they don't have to be the only driver. I mean, like, but in the United States, so we used to have a thing called the National Endowment for the Arts, mm-hmm. which Ronald Reagan killed many, many, many years ago. I mean, he squashed it. Mm-hmm. So there's no more that 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 facility. Like for people, you know, just making a short film if you make it proper. I mean, proper. You know, it's fifty, sixty thousand dollars for yeah. you know. 15 minutes in film it's it's not cheap yeah but hey associate with all the the right creative type people people have the same spirit and yeah my thing is go out and do it yourself just just yeah go do it uh i want to uh pivot back uh to what you said at the beginning of like you know how technology and everything is is just evolving all the time uh because let's be fair like everything was built on the alien set like even the aliens themselves were like proper people putting on that i imagine very heavy suit (laughs) so i i just want to know like how does it feel being part of one of the greatest sci-fi movies and being on set for that and then just going into basically an empty studio putting on a suit uh a mocap suit and that later on, you know, seeing your character back uh, in in the environment where it was imagined to, like, I it must be such a weird <laughs> feeling of how it all changed. Yeah, uh, but, but but think about it. I mean, Stan Winston, who was the, you know, the special mm-hmm. effects guy, I mean, absolute master and genius. The best. Uh, my God, I mean, Jim Jim Cameron successfully put all of us in. His world, the vision of this world, and he made it real, which is you know the camaraderie amongst all of us, um, and and the practical effects. When you look at it, it's it's old fashioned lighting, practical effects, no CGI, and I'm I'm sorry, you, there's no moment in the film where you can go, ah, see, no. I saw, not a, not a one. It's it's it seems, but. Biggest thing when you think about like aliens, or you think about Shawshank. I mean, they, they deal with human um, uh, elements. You know, they, they, they resonate with us as human beings. It's like if there wasn't the camaraderie amongst the space marines, mm-hmm. it's, over. it's over, right? It's done. Um, yeah. And the same thing with uh, with Shawshank. I mean, a group of characters in a real situation. It's all about hope. It's all about friendship. Aliens is is aliens about hope too, really. <laughs> you know, being on the set was absolutely amazing. I, I and this is one story I got to tell you. So I was, we were filming in this disused power plant in Acton, in North, mm-hmm. and uh, 
I was just wandering about and I saw uh, Stan Winston and his crew, they were dealing with the like the the, the pod set, you know, when they first you see the, all the pods and the aliens. And um, we were behind the set and he was rigging up some sort of pulleys or stuff. And I was like, hey, what, what are you guys up to? Goes, oh, yeah, we're just, we're just getting, getting the alien all ready for, for shooting tomorrow. And he was just testing this, this lever. And he said, go around to the other side. He said, I'll show you how it works. So I've just seen the mechanics. <laughs> I go to the other side of the stage and an <laughs> alien comes out. I'm like, whoa! I jumped, <laughs> I jumped about 10 feet in the air. We were like four stories up. I hit the railing. I was like, wow. I, I could have just gone over the railing. And I, and I thought to myself, okay, if I knew exactly how this was going to work and it's scared the living crap out of me. I just think what it's going to do to a film audience. And we had the perfect moment. Bill Pax and I were sitting uh, the night of the premiere in Westwood, Hollywood, about three quarters of the way back. And it, it was a fancy affair. I mean, all of the studio executive people were in bow ties and you know, penguin suits. It was amazing, right? And at the, that moment, when the alien came swimming out, there was this wave of people <laughs> Jumping out of their chairs, and Paxton turned to me and said, "He was like, oh, Mark, this is going to be so awesome.'" <laughs> <laughs> and it is. It's like Aliens is like the perfect uh, roller coaster. Mm. Oh yeah. You know, and 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 Jim Cameron, like, this is something I you know, I, I talk about this a lot, but the day that I'm finally was called into Pinewood Studios and I walk into Jim's office and he and Gail are there. And the first thing that hit me was, was on, the storyboard of the film was on every wall in sequence, all the way around, all the way, every, beautiful. You know, Jim's a very fine artist. Hmm. And I thought, okay, I'm in something that's really, really special business. And then they finally handed me the script and then I went home and I, you know, you couldn't stop it. I read it in like 40 minutes and just, God, this just moved that way. Right. Yeah. But I would wager that Jim's storyboard is exactly what is on the film. Wow. Because that's how prepared he was. He had to be because you know he was on the hook for any overages on the budget. Mm -hmm. So I know, like any real director, like the, I was talking with this producer buddy of mine, he said that uh, when Sacha Baron Cohen was supposed to be playing uh, uh, Freddie Mercury and going in, yeah. absolutely right. The reason they fired him was because they said, so look, we can arrange for you to meet the Queen and we can spend some time with them and just get their perspective on Freddie. And, and apparently his response was, was like, Oh no no don't, no! I, I don't do that. No, I'll just I'll wing it on the day. And this producer, right, who's like, oh, you know, millions and millions of dollars. He went to Graham King and said, uh, "You can't have it. He's, yeah. he, it's not going to work out." So uh, preparedness. Mm. Got to be prepared. Got to be prepared. You, you got to be. In this industry, you got to be able to jump. So, Jim, yeah, I mean, the reason the movie's cast well, everything else, we rehearsed. We spent two and a half weeks rehearsing. That's why our camaraderie was so tight on Aliens. Uh, in Shawshank, we rehearsed for three weeks. Yeah. We even marked it out like you used to do in the theater, right? And we would. Yeah. Mm. There's a great book, and you may have seen it. It's called uh, Shawshank, the Final Shooting Script. Darabon put it together. It's on Amazon, but it's it's the actual final shooting script. And Darabon includes all the anecdotes of what was cut, what was added. I'm, I was very chuffed by it because a lot of my lines um, that I improvised. Yeah. Rehearsal made the script. It's like almost 10 of it. So it's like, like some of my like previous lines <laughs> are included. And it was... Uh, it's great. It's great when you have that sort of collaboration. But yeah, Aliens, look, it was, it was the first movie, big movie for me. I'd done a couple others. I mean, Revolution was a really big movie, but it, it seemed to be a mess. But um, Aliens, 
and, and the only film I've ever done where we remain friends. And and seriously, yeah. hey, how are you? Most of the time, you you know, you work with somebody, they go, oh yeah, we'll get together and we'll do this, and you never see them. Mm-hmm. Uh, aliens, no, we've been, and you know, main reason was was Bill Paxton was the glue amongst all of us. You know, he really was the most tender, enthusiastic, sweethearted gentleman. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorely, sorely, sorely miss Billy. Yeah, well, imagine so, yeah. for sure. Wow. Well. Game over, man. Game over. Yeah. <laughs> Game over, man. Go is the greatest. Like, oh, love it so much. Uh, Katie, you had a question on your mind. Hey, um, I did. I, I was. I was going to ask some. Um, obviously, in order to prepare, because I am a professional. Um, <laughs> I was looking through your Wikipedia, and, and and Wikipedia lists you as a character actor, and I was curious if that was like. Is that sort of the way that you kind of see yourself in the way that you you like pick roles, or is that are you are you just somebody who's like I just like working because <laughs> I like, just like will take anything if it seems interesting, kind of a thing, or yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I've always I, I knew early on that I I'm not Brad Pitt, not mm-hmm. um, having received the training I did at Drama Center. I mean, we were all about transforming ourselves. Yeah, transformation is is. The pinnacle, you know, if you can transform, uh, yeah. That, that, so that that's always the goal. But no, yeah. I, I I pride myself on being a character actor. I mean, I really to to transform and to have people believe it's not really you. That's yeah. that's that's what I love most. I mean, yeah, I was I was going through your um your you know the many credits to your name and and realizing that I had seen you in so many things over the years because I like I I was recently watching rewatching the X Files and you did two episodes of the X Files and 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 like just so many of like the little bits and pieces that I I have been watching for so long and just not really being like being aware that it was you but like now I'm like oh of course that makes so much sense. Did you see? There's that thing that uh, actually one of my former agents uh, produced uh, called that that guy and that thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They did a that gal and that thing as well, um, uh, and I think they're doing one about actors in Star Trek. But, uh, really I I think so. Yeah, because my friend uh, Rick Verti uh, did uh, that guy in that in that thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's where he participated in, and then later on they asked him for the Star Trek one as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, I, but I, I take it as a compliment. I really do. You know, even if people don't necessarily know my name, you know, it, it, it's nice to be recognized. Uh, although usually, you know, I get recognized for say Shawshank. It's, you were so bad. <laughs> I, was, yeah, I mean, well, yeah. <laughs> it was, it was a dirty job and somebody had to do it. So yeah. <laughs> Did you audition? For that role specifically, oh, yeah. or what, or was that another role that you went for? No, uh, well, when I initially went in after I read the script, uh, I really wanted to have a go at uh, Hadley. Okay, okay. Uh, um, but Deborah Quilla was very emphatic. She said they already have somebody in mind for that. She was read bonds, read bonds. Mm. So prepared for that, and uh, yeah, it was first audition in my life when I would I was like oh my god I hit the zone I really I knew I knew I hit the zone because playing a character like that like you really have to just just talk it, it, it's a it's a more eerily uh, menacing when somebody just talks and they're not acting and that was the I went home that evening I was like oh my god thank god I felt it I did it did I actually, you know, it's a, it's a goal just to be able to sit and chat, talk. And um, that was corroborated when we were act- actually filming because that that was Morgan Freeman's thing. It's like, you know what? Just gotta be, just be real. It's just, just talking to people. He, he called out Tim Robbins on set for saying, hey, Tim, like, you know when they're doing the scene with the rocks in the, in yeah. the yard? Um, Morgan stopped the shot. He's like, Tim, Come on, man. Let's just be right here. Let's just talk. He said, "Cut out this movie star shit. Cut it out. Just like talk with him. the whole crew." Like, wow. But yeah, um, I, 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 
I really that that that's what I try and do most. I try and maintain sort of sense of reality and humanity, and um, and that's the goal. I'm happy there. Are lots of things uh, to have done in little characters here and there. I mean, people say my my favorite character of all is I played Alistair, the demon of all demons in, in Supernatural. Supernatural. Yeah. yeah. But if you check out that performance, I, I, I had the most fun of my life on that show because <laughs> big head honchos were away on a, a, a location scout. And uh, the guy there was an executive, but he kind of let me do my thing. Oh, my God, I had such fun. And it was also, you know, I was doing like this sort of homage to Hannibal Lecter and Marlon Miranda all at once. Um, scared the shit out of my daughter. <laughs> 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 and we, we, we watched it here at home and she kept creeping away from me down the couch. <laughs> Go like, you <laughs> Dad, why are you talking like that? You're creeping me out. <laughs> Boys, it's so weird. But we, uh, such fun. Such fun. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I'm, I love I'm that. very happy to be regarded as a character. All I did in, in my entire like theater life and, and, well, movie life, which is more like dying in everything as an extra. <laughs> so, but in my theater life, I always had two roles. Either I've been playing the villain, which I love because I love playing the villain. It's fun. Uh, or or I'm the comedic relief uh, of, of the group. So that's the two things I've, I've ever done, really. I once played the romantic role. It's not my cup of tea. <laughs> like, it's, it's not me. <laughs> but it's, it's so rewarding to, to do like these really really bad guys and just bring out the worst <laughs> of like that's possible and I'm like yes and then I yeah. go back and being like very cheerful <laughs> on the big days <laughs> just... well, the, well, the biggest key to, 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 to whether it be comedy or even playing a villain is like you have to love your character yeah. even if they're despicable you have to love them. So, because if you don't, then you're in judgment of it, and then you're not really playing the character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I really made that my uh, my goal, and uh, luckily you work with enough great crew people like to help you with hair dudes or wings or and I, I judge like Spider Man, I, like that hair head of hair they gave me. God, <laughs> <that's> amazing. <laughs> It is. It is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, beautiful, beautiful. I always say that. Um, all right. Before we let you go, I I think you already said your advice uh, to to young people who uh, aspire to be actors. Uh, so if you have anything to say to your lovely fans who's gonna watch this episode, what would it be? The message for them. I think the biggest thing in life is really is is to stay interested. Be enthusiastic, and then probably be compassionate. We have to stay interested because otherwise, you know, you can go down evil, dark rabbit holes. Mm. You have to be enthusiastic because no matter what you're like, like you're, you're, when you go up for a job interview, what are most pe people looking for? They want to know that you're trustworthy, mm. you're enthusiastic, mm -hmm. and that um not saying that you're as happy, but you, you, you have to be personal, right? But probably enthusiasm is the thing you'll take to the furthest. I mean, I'm telling you, like, I, I think of Bill Paxton. Like, I would say he's the most enthusiastic guy I've ever met. Bill, every time he would be doing a job, like, he had this thing where he made it a goal that he knew everybody's name on the crew. Everybody. Everybody. So I took that. It's it, it's great because then all the people that are, as you know, uh, putting the set together and making sure everything's working, so the actor is coming and do their thing. It's like you better know their name, you know. You better be enthusiastic about them too. About it, it's a collaboration. It's, it's it's all it's a collaborative art. But I think even you can take all those qualities as well and take them out into the real world. People still want to know people who are you know present, enthusiastic, and interested. You know, the big, I, my daughter works in, um, my youngest works in the uh, fundraising for uh, mm -hmm. not for profit arts company. And she was like, 
dad, I really, I can't get over this hurdle of like engaging people like to, to give money. I said, sweetheart, it's so simple. You, mm -hmm. you just say this, say, so what do you do? <laughs> okay. What do you do? That shows you're interested. And then when they tell you what you do, you find something to engage in a, in a conversation. That's like, it's like, Billy, you say you and Yuri hit off because yeah, yeah. You find common ground. And um, that's what I would say. Be interested, be enthusiastic. Otherwise, life can be a real drag. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. That's, that's and, just great. And, we, and you did say you were going to ask me what my favorite movie of all time is. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, please, yes. Please. Yes, please, please. That's Give very me. true. <laughs> it's regarded as potentially like the greatest French film of all time. Mm -hmm. It's called Les Enfants du Paradis or The Children of Paradise. Find it online. It's directed by uh, Marcel Karn, 1947, during the Nazi occupation in France. How they did this, I'll never know. But it has the famous French mind, Jean Libaro, the leading actress. Oh my God, Lily, you'll love her. I, I, like when I first saw her film, I just fell in love. She's, her name's Arlette P. It's just so present. So, and the, the writing that is filmed is just, it's extraordinary. You have to, you have to see it. Oh, yeah. Black and white, black and white but it all revolves around the theater. It's about the theater. And, and not of it. It's about, it revolves around the theater, but it's about it. Oh. And please, watch it. I just watched it with my youngest daughter, and she was like, Dad, this is incredible. And you know, who thought in 1947? It's, uh, but yeah, check it out. It's, it's a I will. Oh, definitely. I made a note. Thank you. I made a note as well. Uh, I, I think my dad mentioned it at one point because as soon as you said it, I was like, oh, I, it, that sounds familiar. And I am, I, I really like movies like that. So I'm like, I'm very intrigued already. I can't wait to check it out. It was a great honor to have you, uh, honestly. And thank you for coming on our little podcast and having this chat with us. Uh, and, you know, hopefully maybe when Spider-Man 3 rolls around, we can have you back. <laughs> have a catch up. Let's do that. I would I would love to do that. And then we'll be able to talk more openly about it. Oh yeah, we're just gonna bring all the Spider-Man crew together, Naji and Yuri, you, and just everyone, and just do a big talk on movies and whatever we like to do with them. They're such a great crew, really. You should tap into all of them. Bill, Bill Salyers, is he is funny as all get out. He made a great interview. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. It was a real pleasure meeting you, and I and we will do it in the next few years, or maybe a few years. <laughs> Hey, maybe between then, you know, now and then, uh, I will have done something else that we can talk about. Yeah, so, exactly. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I will just message you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to keep contact with people we, who we, we had on, so we, we can come together again and, and do this again, because it's always oh, fun. Thank you so much. Have a great holiday. Thank you. It was a pleasure. All right. And thank you guys for coming uh, on this journey with us. Uh, we're going to be back next week. Uh, so, you know, don't forget to check back on us. And don't forget to hit all those uh, subscribe and whatever buttons that we have. <laughs> Just leave a like, leave a comment, uh, leave nice messages to Mark because, you know, I'm going to forward it. So, so do it. Uh, <laughs> and play Spider-Man uh, and watch movies. And That's watch the movies. Thing. That's our big thing. <laughs> That's the main thing. Bye, everybody. All the best.